Hey folks, so today I'm going to be taking a look at Kubuntu 18.04, the latest long-term support release from the member of the Ubuntu family that uses the Plasma desktop. Now, this is a little bit of a difficult video to make, I must say, because I've been running Kubuntu on the Triton laptop now for well, maybe since the beta 2 release, and I've had zero issues with it whatsoever. Um, but also, I don't really have too much to say about it. It's the uh, KDE Plasma desktop that we've all come to know and love, and uh, and, it, and, it, and it does what it says on the tin, I guess. So I suppose for a quick synopsis of, of what this review is largely going to entail is um, if you're looking at the uh, vanilla Ubuntu and, and you're looking at it and, you, and it's not really for you, but you do want a full featured desktop with a nice little bit of polish, lots of features, lots of tools to use, uh, nice and slick, a sort of professional enterprise grade desktop, then this is definitely one to look towards. It's a little bit more of a traditional desktop metaphor. It looks a little bit more, shall we say, like Windows 7. Uh, however, of course, here I've got the um, launcher bar on the left-hand side. It's an incredibly customizable desktop environment. Uh, it offers a fair number of themes, and but with even within the default Breeze theme, uh, which I think they've slightly modified into a Kubuntu theme here, uh, but still very much based on the, the Breeze theme, there are uh, countless ways that you can customize that um, you know, it, it, sort of widths of borders and all this kind of stuff. So, uh, KDE Plasma is is considered probably the most customizable of all the desktops. Now, the reason I've got the launcher here on the left hand side is because it's uh, one of the desktop environments that actually does uh, vertical launchers really quite well. Uh, sometimes with some distributions, uh, you you can sort of tell that um, they are designed for a, for a horizontal panel, and when you sort of make them vertical, it sort of you have to do a lot of spacing readjustments and it doesn't always fit in completely naturally. And um, But with KDE Plasma, it seems to have a great, um, a fantastic way of adjusting itself and looks really quite natural no matter how you do it. And the reason it's on the left-hand side is because uh, on the Triton netbook, now I've actually got it spun up in a virtual machine here, as you can probably tell, but in the netbook I've got it set up, uh, not the netbook, the laptop, I've got it set up uh, in very much the same way. And the reason I've got that set up like that is because when you're using the tracker pad, it's much more easy just to swipe your index finger to the left to access all of the tools, your, uh, you know, your minimized applications, your, your the launcher bar, the, the, all the stuff down here. Uh, it's so much easier to, to sort of um, move the cursor over to the left-hand side of the screen than it is to sort of curl your, your fingers and, 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 and gravitate the, cur uh, the cursor towards the bottom of the screen. It's a very, very slight difference, but someone recommended it to me quite some time ago, and um, and yeah, like whenever I use KDE for some reason, uh, in a lot of cases, I, I just uh, pop the panel launcher onto the left-hand side. It's very easy to do, and it just offers me uh, a slightly more intuitive interface. Um, but this hasn't, this isn't really a particularly far departure from the KDE Plasma desktop that we've grown used to, and um, I think that's a, a good thing because it allows for that consistent um, experience, but it also makes for a difficult video to make because, you know, if you like KD Plasma and you like stable polished desktops, well, this is certainly a fantastic contender. So, I've got a few things here. I was looking through the release notes. Is there is there stuff that I can actually sort of, you know, really get to grips with, really get sort of excited over? And it seems that they've spent most of their time just nailing down the quality elements of this desktop, which is something that, um, you know, is, is obviously required by all kinds of desktops and all kinds of distributions. And they've done a fantastic job here. Nothing has crashed on me, not through the beta, not through the final. Um, I've installed the minimal uh, suite of applications here. So this is a one of the new features in all of the Ubuntu variants, or at least most of them, or the ones that I've tested, is that there are the option to have a minimal install. And this allows you to install the Ubuntu operating system, or the Kubuntu operating system in this case, with only the bare minimum of applications, and you install what you want on top of that. This is fantastic. This is a fantastic idea, and I think I must have to join in the chorus of saying, "Oh, you know, this 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 is a brilliant idea. We could have used this, you know, like years ago." But um, but it's here and it's great. Um, so uh, this is I haven't installed a single thing on this particular machine. I've installed quite a few things on on the netbook, so I know that the installation process is as easy as ever. And I'll I'll look in, you know, I'll I'll go through that with you in a second. Um, 
But here, let's just take a look at the applications that have been installed here. So here's the favorites, here are the basics. So you've got Firefox Discover, which is a software center. Kate, which is a really quite good uh, text editor. Uh, Dolphin File Manager, System Monitor, System Settings, Console, a really good terminal console there as well. Uh, the KDE apps are really good, they're full featured, and um, and yeah, there's a lot to them. You'll find plenty of use out of them. Now in the application, the full set of applications, we've got some image viewers, document viewers, that kind of stuff. Um, and in fact, with, uh, yeah, so um, there's Ocular there as well, which is the uh, document viewer. Uh, in, the, in the internet, they've installed Firefox, just Firefox there. Uh, multimedia, they have included VLC instead of, um, I think it's Dragon Player. Uh, Pulse Audio Volume Control as well, that's a really good volume control outlet, um, applet rather, and K3B Burning. Now I've not burnt um, a CD for quite some time using this application, but I have done so in the past and it has always served me well. Um, so we've got uh, settings. I think settings are reasonably self-explanatory there. And the system tools here. So you've got a little bit here. Uh, oh, I am not familiar with Muon Package Manager. So this actually, this is new. Um, but also does look vaguely f similar to sort of, it looks a little bit like Synaptic, a little bit like Octopi. Um, But it looks good. Okay, so this is nice. I like this, actually. This is really good. Now, I've got to admit, when it does come to package management, my instincts sort of take over, and I uh, I tend to, to drop to the command line. I think when you've used Linux, I know a lot of people um, often like to sort of say that you don't need to ever use the, or you shouldn't ever need to use the command line um, to use uh, Linux. Uh, I think a lot of people over the course of time prefer to use the command line because it's a really consistent workflow um, that you just sort of fall into, uh, really. I never really intended to use the, the command line as much as I do, but... Uh, but it just becomes easier and it becomes it allows you to uh, do any number of tasks regardless of your uh, operating system regardless of your desktop environment and it just provides that complete level of consistency that is just very comfortable for a lot of us and I'm sure I uh, I'm sure there are uh, folks that agree, agree with me on that one that the terminal just it, it, you know it, it's it's more difficult to learn how to use the nagui it doesn't have all the options laid out in front of you but you know once you you know the help commands and once you read the the manual and um and once you get used to the you know the the the, the use of it um yeah i think uh, in in many cases but obviously not all cases the command line is just you know it's it's just preferable to use i guess more over anything else um and uh yeah just to that ends console is a uh, it's a nice little uh, it's a nice little command line terminal there. So so we've got the applications here and this is the minimal install. So it really does you know it doesn't give you LibreOffice, although LibreOffice 6 uh, comes with it. Um, although that being said, LibreOffice is available as an app image as well. Um, so if you ever want to try out the latest LibreOffice but um, you don't really want to mess around with your system then the app image is available. It comes with Firefox 59 as the default browser which is uh, which is what you'd expect. Um, and the, yes, there are a few um, a few other ones here. They have also um, got a dark breeze theme for the actual Plasma desktop, but they're using the light theme for applications because some applications don't look particularly wonderful with dark themes. I'm looking at you, Firefox, but I think that there are others. So a lot of times it's generally considered common practice to use light themes for your applications to avoid... Um, you know, sort of uh, low contrast outcomes. So, this is the Discover. Um, this is the software installer. Uh, it does what it says on the tin. Um, I do. Uh, it does, yeah, like it does. It does what it says on the tin. I must say, I do have a preference for the the Ubuntu installer, and the reason for that is simply because um, it just shows more in a screen. Like for example, here um, you can you know you can only see like five uh, entries in an application. That's really the extent of, of, of my preference for the Ubuntu store over this one. But short of that, you know, you search for what you want and then you click the install button. Uh, it's really just as easy as that. So there we go. Oh, I've got to put the old password in. But really, yeah, simple scan. Uh, just an example. Installing. There we go. And then, with any luck, is it going to be in, uh, I would say it's in graphics. 
Oh, application's updated. There we go. Simple scan. Now, actually, there is scan light there, which is also a scan program. So I've just installed a second scanning program. No LibreOffice, but two ways to scan documents. So there we go. That's the workflow of the day. Um, I could look into the system settings as well. Um, they s seem perfectly easy to use. In fact, one of the things I really like about the system settings in general is that you can actually search it through the menu here. So if I wanted to turn off compositing, it just it shows it, you know, and and it's a menu, you know, it, it's a, it's an item within the uh, the things here, but it just pops open as a window, um, and it gives you yeah, it gives you loads of options. Uh, yeah, so it absolutely allows you to micromanage your system, but it's done in a really user friendly way. So it's I do have to say that there is this degree of you get the best of both worlds. You get a customizable system um, that is actually still really easy to use, and I. I um, there is, you know, there's. I, I, I think I might have said this was seventeen ten, but I think that there was at the time, and you know, sort of gnome notwithstanding, a good case to be made for having uh, KDE Plasma as the primary Ubuntu desktop because it's full featured and it's consistent and it's shiny and it's themable and it's customizable. Uh, you could even uh, make it look very similar to the Unity desktop, uh, the Qt. Um, Libraries are, are really good in my experience, and um, yeah, like I can't speak its praises more highly enough. One thing I haven't looked at with this desktop is that, oh, so it gives you um, it gives you five gives you gives you five. Mm, oh, that's nice. Oh, I, actually, I like that. Okay, we'll stick with that one. Oh, that's oh no, hang on. That's the one I wanted. There you go. So we've got a few images there, but also, can we get new image, get new wallpapers? Ah, okay. So there's a few here. Quite easy to uh, pull down some from the internet. What's this one? Three res. Can we? So we installed that one. Does that pull it down here? I think so. Oh, what a lovely picture. Okay, so there we go. That's how you get new uh, wallpapers there, uh, and that was completely unscripted. So that was just you were you were watching me learn through the process right there. So that's yeah, that's kind of pretty intuitive. The one thing that I I will say about KDE Plasma, and it's a bit of an ongoing thing thing, is that I often find that when I try and um, install new themes, uh, they often don't they don't they don't always work as expected, or they don't always look as nice as they do on the preview for one reason or or another. Um, but that's really uh, the minorest of minor issues, really. Um, but like you say, this 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 is the video. Like um, uh, I wish I had more to show you, but this is a really good distribution. Um, it doesn't have uh, any drawbacks really of note. And uh, if you guys enjoy the KD Plasma or polished desktops or intuitive desktops, um, then it's 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 worth a look. And also, one thing I did notice on the Triton laptop is that even with Firefox open playing a YouTube video. Uh, it still was using less than a gig of RAM, so I can't even say it's bloated because it's not. It's, I mean, okay, admittedly there are going to be a, f a few of you guys there that say that a gig of RAM might be on the higher end when you've got things like LXDE that seems seems to be able to do it on like one bit of RAM, obviously not literally, um, but yeah, like you you can get like LXDE or L LXQT, and they will run on like I don't know less than 200 megabytes of RAM perhaps um, and then you load up of course Firefox with YouTube and then you're back up to the <laughs> to the near gig of RAM because YouTube is the one that's just eating up all that memory and processing power um, but yeah and I think it says something about the state of technology when the biggest um, you know the biggest load that your system has to take on is is a website uh, but uh, yeah that aside yeah it's a fantastic distribution and if I was the kind of person to actually Settle on a distribution. This would this would rank incredibly highly, but you know I've been singing the praises of every Linux um, every uh, of the every one of these new Ubuntu distributions, and I really can't find much anything really uh, anything wrong with them. They're they're fantastic. It's a incredibly high quality set of distributions, and I think that the developers should be incredibly proud of themselves for for developing something as as 
uh, as fantastic and amazing as all of this. So um, if any of you uh, folks are watching, then I'd like to uh, extend a, a heartfelt thank you uh, and my most serious gratitude for a fantastic set of wonderful Linux distributions that will serve us years into the future. So, um, yeah, with that being said, I've got to end it there. I don't, I don't really have more, much more to show you because uh, the KDE Plasma desktop has just continued to uh, develop on a very consistent logical level, uh, which is what I like, what I like to see. And uh, yeah, like this is a distribution that fits like a comfortable shoe. And I'm sure KDE Plasma advocates um, and users will thoroughly enjoy it, as will people who are just looking for a grand old distribution. So thank you very much for watching. Um, and uh, yeah, until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.